Okay, so now let's look at uh, cholera, right? Okay, so uh, this bacteria, right, is found in the family uh, Vibrin, Vibrionaceae, Vibrionaceae, and the genus uh, Vibrio. And then the medically important species, we have uh, Vibrio uh, cholera, Vibrio uh, parahemolyticus, Vibrio alginolyticus, and Vibrio uh, vulnificus. Okay, okay, but the first two are very important. Okay, let's look at uh, the morphology, right? So, uh, the cholera bacteria in general uh, is short, a slightly curved, a gram negative rod, right? It's coma shaped. Uh, you know, uh, in mucus, it appears like a parallel parallel rows which can be described described like fish in the stream right it's actively motile uh, because it is what a single polar flagellum so to see this uh, flagellum we use a uh, weight mount technique okay uh, right so cholera can grow in uh, in ordinary media, it prefers alkaline conditions, but here we have a special media for it. Number one, we have alkaline peptone water uh, at pH 8.6. Number two, we have a uh, Mansuri taurocholate telluride peptone water at pH uh, 9.2. Then uh, number three, we have a uh, alkaline biosalt agar bsa uh, at ph 8.2 all right and number four we have our uh, mansuris gelatin taurocholate triptychase telluride agar okay it's gtta all right uh, so gtta media all right so uh on this media uh uh, the cholera appear like as small translucent colonies, which are uh, like grayish, which have grayish black center and a turbid halo. Okay. Uh, on TCBS medium, right? T TCBS meaning thiosulfate, citrate, biosols, and sucrose. So this is thiosulfate you know the way thiosulfate is long so here is the formula for thiosulfate right so in this media this bacteria they appear like as a large yellow colonies which may be green on uh, on continued incubation right so they like generally they are yellow but if you continue with the incubation they will change to green these colonies. Uh, now looking at the characteristics of growth. Okay, so this is behavior in the culture media. Okay, so a cholera vibrance, they are strongly aerobic. Uh, temperature ranges from 15 to 40 degrees Celsius, uh, where the optimum temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. Their growth is better in alkaline medium uh, of like pH uh, 6.4 to 9.6, where the optimum pH is uh, 8.2. Okay. Their behavior on nutrient agar, nutrient agar, okay. So the colonies are moist, translucent, and round discs, which are a one to two millimeters in diameter with a bluish tinge in the uh, in transmitted light okay uh, in peptone water uh, the growth occurs as a fine surface pellicle which when shaped breaks into membranous pieces okay so that's it about the growth characteristics uh, now on the resistance, okay, so these cholera vibrants, they are susceptible to heat, drying, and acids, 
and also high pOH pOH is alkaline so in high alkaline condition they are susceptible right okay they are destroyed at 55 degrees Celsius in 15 minutes uh, they're also killed in few minutes in gastric juice of normal acidity but they may survive for 24 hours in the um, acloridic gastric juice okay uh, so their survival is influenced by by its pH uh, temperature uh, salinity and the presence of organic pollution and others okay so now let's look at the classification of uh, vibrios right okay all of them in general okay uh, we have two main, two main uh, methods we have uh, biochemical classification by Heibig okay so Heibig uh, classified uh, uh, vibrios into six groups based on ferment fermentation of manos sucrose and arabinos okay so uh, vibro cholerae uh, belong belongs to group one group one which is uh, manos positive sucrose positive and arabinos negative okay number two methods Me uh, the, this method is based on um, serology serological uh, classification right so all the vibrios possess a common H antigen and a group specific O antigen and again there are about 139 zero groups right so our vibro cholerae it belongs to our O1 group okay so very this is classification of vibrios now classification of uh, fibro cholerae classification of fibro cholerae right so according to their biological properties fibro cholerae uh, is divided into two biovars right we have um fibro cholerae uh, biovar classical and fibro cholerae uh, biovar eotor Okay, so let's uh, differentiate between these two biovars, biovar uh, classical and biovar eotor. Right. Firstly, we on agglutination of uh, foul erythrocytes. Right. Uh, biovar classical is negative, where eotor is positive. Right. Uh, lysis of uh, erythrocytes uh, classical negative, eotor positive uh, growth in in the presence of uh, polymyxin B right classical cannot grow Eutor can grow okay uh, production of acetone in Voges Proskawa tests right uh, classical does not produce acetone but Eutor it produces right uh, on sensitivity to phages right so uh, classical is sensitive to uh, mukherjee's uh, group 4 phage c right whereas uh, eotor is sensitive to mukherjee's group 5 phage that's eotor right okay so again on this first two right uh, classical does not agglutinate the um, uh, foul erythrocytes, right? It does not agglutinate, whereas the eotor uh, is agglutinates, right? On lysis of uh, sheep erythrocytes, uh, there is no lysis in classical uh, biova, but uh, there is lysis in eotor. So now let's look at the antigenic structure. Okay. So according to the structure of uh, O1 antigen, right, a vibrocholery uh, is subdivided into three uh, uh, serotypes, right. First one is called uh, Ogawa, Ogawa AB. 
Then the second one is Inaba or Inaba uh, AC. And then the third one is uh, Hiko Yima, Hiko Yima ABC. Okay. And of course the H antigen for flagella. Okay. So this O antigen and H antigen and the, the subdivision of the um, O antigen. All right. Okay, so let's look at the uh, factors of virulence, right? Uh, firstly, we have exotoxin. Uh, in this case, it's also known as a uh, choleragen, right? So this choleragen uh, is uh, two subunits, right? Two types of subunits. It is uh, a five, B, five of B subunits and one of A, a subunit, right? Okay, so A is for active and B is for binding. So what will happen is uh, this uh, B subunits, they will bind on the uh, GM1 gangliosides of the epithelial cells of uh, small intestines, right? So by binding, uh, they will uh, allow the entrance of the A subunit, right? So when the A subunit uh, like enters like into the through the cell membrane, uh, it will uh, activate uh, the G protein, right? And then G protein uh, will stimulate uh, the adenylate cyclase. Uh, the adenylate cyclase is responsible for conversion of ATP into cyclic ANP. So if there is uh, stimulation, there is overstimulation, there will be increase in the amount of cyclic AMP. So by increase in the amount of cyclic ANP, uh, will, there will be loss of ions like sodium and chloride, right? Okay, so after that, uh, so th those uh, electrolytes, they will be in the uh, intestinal lumen, right? So there will be, uh, the water will always, you know, all water is a, a, is a, a, a slave for sodium so it always follow so that there will be a uh, massive dehydration uh, thereby causing uh, a diarrhea okay then the second one is uh, the endotoxin right so uh, this endotoxin is a uh, polysaccharide or antigen right Poly polysaccharide or antigen okay so it has no role in pathogenesis of cholera but it is responsible for immunity, uh, which is induced by killed vaccines, right? Then here on adherence factors, uh, yeah, some of them have a pili, right? So pili for adhesion into the uh, intestinal mucosa. And then we also have our proteolytic enzymes. Uh, uh, for example, there is uh, gelatinase and uh, Mutinous. So now on uh, laboratory diagnosis, right? Uh, so we use these specimens, right? Uh, water is two, a rectal swab, water, uh, food, or vomited material, right? Okay. So firstly, on primary diagnosis, uh, it's microscopy. Okay. So uh, we we do our uh, stains. Right, you do like uh, grim staining, right? Then uh, you use weight mount technique to determine uh, a vibratory motility of the uh, fibril color. Okay, uh, on final diagnosis, because this one is presumptive, but this one is final. Uh, this one is uh, mainly by ba bacteriological methods. Uh, that is pure culture isolation. So you have uh, three main steps, right? Firstly, uh, you have inoculation of collected samples. Uh, so you inoculate a uh, collected sample into alkaline peptone water and then spread a large loop of feces over the plate of TCBS medium. TCBS is a thiosulfate citrate bio salt sucrose media okay then uh, after incubation for about five hours then the subculture 
from the first peptone water is transmitted into the second alkaline peptone and on a second plate of uh, TCBS other. So this one is the first, or number one, this one is the first. On the second stage, right? Okay, we, we, t we, we take this, this first, uh, first peptone water, right? Then we, we incubate it, right? Then after five hours, we take two more samples, right? Then one, we will transfer it into a, a second uh, uh, alkaline peptone water and a second TCBS agar, right? So what will happen, right? So on, uh, we, we will do microscopy of wet mound smears from uh, peptone water, right? And then agglutination with uh, O1 anti serum, okay, right? But for the final identification, uh, we either use a uh, Heimberg's test, uh, biovan detection, uh, serological, and phage typing, right? So these are other two methods which we can use. Uh, here you have a uh, retrospective diagnosis. Uh, Retrospective diagnosis is here you identify uh, vibriocidal antibodies in the uh, serum of, a, of the patient, right? Then we have our uh, express methods, right? So in this e express method, uh, here usually uh, identify like the mot motility of vibrio, uh, which we can inhibit by the anti serum, right? And we can see using what dark field. Or phase contrast microscope and another method again is immunofluorescence the therapy okay so uh, we can do oral rehydration oral rehydration therapy to an infected person or we can give uh, we can also give antibiotics like tetracycline right uh, what are the methods of uh, prophylaxis here we have our uh, general measures, general hygiene measures. We have uh, purification uh, of water supplies, right? So water which goes to the people for uh, domestic use should be purified. Uh, better provision of sewage disposal, right? Uh, and also isolation of infected people, right? Uh, and lastly, uh, careers follow up okay so career should be uh, followed up and giving uh, and should be given uh, antibiotics right uh, and then uh, on vaccination right you have three types firstly we have a uh, cured parental vaccine okay so this one is composed of equal number of uh, inaba and ogava strains right then the second one Cured oral vaccines. This one, uh, they they contain uh, cholera toxin B subunit, uh, heat cured classical fibrio, and formerly cured um, eutor fibrio. Okay, and then lastly, we have uh, live oral vaccines. All right. Okay. So this one, they are obtained by what? Uh, recombinant DNA uh, DNA recombinant